about these ratings. I don't think they're pretty slick. Yeah. Good job. I wish I'd put more in now. It's going to be well protected. I wish I'd put some more frocks and things in. Oh, we should put our belt in. Today is the 23rd of July. How long before we leave? Seven days plus three. Plus three. Eight ten. days. Ten. We're leaving in ten Seven days. Seven days plus three is <laughs> ten, not eight. Well, it's cold here, isn't it? Oh, uh, it's a bit breezy this afternoon, but it's a beautiful afternoon. The sun is shining, and the seagulls are eating, and the waves are lapping, <laughs> and we are breathing. And we picked up our tickets, so that all actually is means well. we're going to go. Yes. So actually, we are going. Looks like it. Unless happening. lightning strikes us between now and Sunday morning in about four days, we will be in Chicago. In America, on American soil, not Australian sand. Yeah. <laughs> Too early. Come out and have a look. I can't see. Can you see the horizon? Yeah. Kind of. Mm. You'll be there. That's right. I can hear a plane now. Look at that. There you go. You just click your fingers. <laughs> We're in San yeah, Francisco. Yeah. Think of Lincoln's birthplace. I think it's very nice, and I wouldn't have minded being born here. Mm -hmm. Perhaps in the building as it now is, not the original. No, so, run, no running water, no hot shower, no TV. <laughs> so now we're going to go to Elvis's birthplace yes. later on. And I think it's interesting that two greatest men in America came out of poor little cottages. Joining states. Mm -hmm. Joining states and uh, well, like Mississippi. No, no, Mississippi. Well, it's a pussycat. Skip a state. We're going to go, and this will be my ever first, first ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so nervous. First ever sighting of Graceland. <laughs> That's going to be an experience and a half because I'll be there with 50 million other people. It'll be wild. I 
got a call from the ABC reporter in Washington this morning and he wants to come and interview me tomorrow, but it'll be great if I'm there and no guitar. But it will be there. It will be there, it just might not be ready. So I'll just have to stall him. The second crate has arrived at United Airlines Depot. Um, I'm relieved that it's here, but I guess I won't really be really relieved till it's set up and I've given my talk and meant Elvis week is over and I've sold the guitar. But on a scale of relief, it's up there in the 90s, I oh, guess. Good. Yeah. Because okay. uh, at least it's not sitting in, you know. Chicago. Or ma Mascot Airport in Sydney. Or San Francisco. Or Tokyo. It's close. I can feel it. Take it into the gallery now? Yeah, okay. Probably be a good idea. Yeah. Does it look all right? It looks beautiful. It's <laughs> Nothing wrong, no damage. It'll look good next year. It'll look fantastic. Yeah. It made it. <laughs> Thank you. It made it. It's a beautiful thing. So how's the um, how's the uh, exhibition shaping up? This ex exhibition has already been controversial with the Elvis Faithful. Mm -hmm. And we've had to take down several other pieces. Yeah. And there's some dissension in the little arts community here of whether the show should stay up or come down. And it's really silly, but um, I don't know if you have those kinds of fans in Australia, but there are some that are just like Puritans who... Uh, so these are Elvis fans that want to... Oh, yeah. They're, they're, very, they're very protective of Elvis. We have a, a, a mother and Elvis child uh, religious work and um, you know several of them came over and said that it was uh, sacrilegious towards I guess Christianity and Elvis then we had a crucified Elvis in uh, in underwear and uh, they, they thought that Elvis presented in underwear but that was the you know the swaddling clothes so I don't think I like the way they do things down here because you know, um, it was all a bit too freeform for my liking. I got there and my name's not even on my work, the title's not even on the work. Mm. We had to make a do not touch sign, which everyone ignored anyway. How do you feel now that you're here? How do I feel? Yeah. Well, I feel pretty numb at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Are but, you happy to be here? Oh, yes. Oh, happy, yes. Happy. At last. Yes, I mean, Go through all that rigmarole in LA. Oh, it was shocking. But as soon as I hit Memphis, my, my feet, I, I couldn't walk. Yeah, I could not walk. As soon as I landed in Memphis, I'm walking on air. No, because I'm in Memphis, I'm walking on air. <laughs> I mean, I could not. But here, you see, forget the pain. And quite a few of them were saying that. <laughs> Banana sandwich, oh, that is a must. Yeah, it's going to be a must. I've tried that yet. Yes. But other than that, we're sort of, you know, we'll go and. Do you want me to mind your stuff? Yes. Mind your stuff? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
About being a king, he said that he wasn't a king. Jesus was king. He was just Elvis, just a man. Attention, no one, no one special, just a man. And he, he, he cried, he felt pain, just like everybody else. But everybody considered him to be immortal. Like, he wasn't expected to grow old. When he did change his image, I mean, they, they just felt that um, I mean, when you started getting fat, no, Elvis shouldn't get fat, but he did. Uh, there was a lot of pressure on him. I think that it um, led him to taking drugs to get away from the, the pressure of uh, being Elvis, but he loved being Elvis. Who else could walk into a, to a bank and, and put a hundred, a million dollars on a brown paper bag and cash it? No one could do that. I can easily imagine you putting mystery train on the stereo or popping the comeback special video into the VCR for the sheer pleasure of the experience alone. Reading Marlin, on the other hand, I don't get anything close to that feeling. Then to be fair, she may very well be the most passionate, most enthusiastic, most devoted Elvis fan in all of Minnesota. But none of that comes through in her prose. Has the teeth all capped? It's a different kind of Elvis that's shown up on the set of movies like Love and You. But he's growing more savvy, and he's getting a little... What's wrong with Elvis studies? He's exactly backwards. In Creole, there's a problem. It's his most exciting role ever. It's his most challenging role ever. It's not that it fails to be fun, but that it doesn't take Elvis seriously enough. Admittedly, this is something of a false dichotomy. 